Okay, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how to start this one. So I know this is going to be rough. So brace yourselves on this. I've brought the camera in close so we could be a little bit more intimate. But I have to explain that I was I was wrong. Okay, um, so this is a point that we've covered a bit on the show. And it turns out I was incorrect as to my information on this. Um, so whew, it's a rough one. Now, I've said before that uh, I appreciate when people correct me when I'm wrong. And uh, my goal is always to be correct. And the way to be correct is to, when you're wrong, find out you're wrong and then correct it and then be right going forward. So I'm, I'm appreciative that we've discovered that I'm wrong now rather than later and Hopefully that means we can move forward with uh, with that information and use it usefully. So give your give yourselves a moment to prepare yourself, and we'll get to it right after the bump. All right, we're back. I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. So what was I wrong about? I know this is... So a lot of people argued with me about this. Um, so that makes being wrong about it feel even dumber. Um, but so it turns out, and I only learned this today. So I was today days old, today years old when I, uh, when I learned this. But so there is actually a path, a standard path, a normal path, by which you can actually take a job in Nicaragua. Now, we all, I said there were like extreme cases, yes. That's what I'm not saying it was truly impossible. I never actually said that. But I did say that Residencia did not have any way to lead you to it, that people looking at Residencia, this was not a path that was going to get them that, and that, that was that was foolish. Now, I'm going to stand by that it doesn't make sense to go out and take a job in Nicaragua all of my logic, and I did have quite a few videos where I said, despite the fact that you can't, it doesn't matter because you wouldn't want to. And at least one person who could, who, who asked, actually could have gotten a job because he was actually Nicaraguan, but he had access to other markets. And so my point was that even though he could, he wouldn't want to. So I'm sticking to you wouldn't want to. But I do think I've thought of a case where you might need to. But let me explain. All right, so our, our first piece, what was I actually wrong about? Let's get to my actual mistake. So the actual mistake is there is a standard path for uh, residencia, for, for getting a residency. So if you're a tourist, you can't work, right? That stands. Normal residencia, you can't work. That stands. Where I'm wrong is that investor residencia, that is the big one, the one that takes a lot of money, the one that takes a lot of time, the one you have to keep proving, the one you have to have employees, you have to do all these things to qualify for. That one, apparently, I just learned, actually does either directly give you the right to work or at least gives you the option of somehow applying for it. Um, so I don't know any details because I no, can't even begin to imagine why I would want to or anyone who has it that would ever want to, to go find out, but so, if for some reason you needed to work, you could do so by getting residency. Now, somebody mentioned in the hypothetical, wouldn't that be like buying yourself a really bad job? Yes, in most cases, that would be like buying yourself a really bad job because you have to become an investor. And to be an investor in Nicaragua, in Nicaraguan terms, you have to be an employer. So you can't just go out and, and like buy something and be like, yeah, I'm an investor. I bought a bunch of trees. In some cases, there might be a way you can do that, right? I'm not, I'm not going out and saying that, but under normal circumstances, the investor residency requires a certain number of employees, uh, a certain amount of investment, a certain amount of investment growth, um, and you have to be inspected and you have to have working employees and they have to be fully under the tax regime. You have to be creating jobs. There's a whole bunch of things. So once you've met all those requirements and get residency through the investment regime, you apparently then have the right to work, which is what I was wrong about. I thought you did not, even under that regime. So, so I was definitely wrong because this was specifically brought up. No one said, I think, specifically under this one thing you could do it. No one pointed that out. But people did think that there was a way to get to do this. I'm like, no, what are you talking about? And I was wrong, which I do not like at all. So, yeah, but... 
under normal circumstances, I'm going to completely stick by, and hopefully I'm not wrong about this, that you wouldn't want to work. Two reasons. One is the general. You don't want a job in Nicaragua because my audience who's hearing this, some of you have to work in Nicaragua, right? Some of my audience are Nicaraguan. So you have to work in Nicaragua. That's, that's where you're able to work under most circumstances. That's different. You're allowed to. But if you're my other audience, my English-speaking foreign audience who's looking at moving to Nicaragua, and you're like, but I'd like a job. And I keep saying, no, that's not what you want. I don't know exactly what you do want, but it's not that, right? You want some way to have income. You want to work somewhere that isn't Nicaragua. There's a million things. There's a million things of misunderstanding. And I actually dread having this it's not a loophole, but this exception to the blanket ban on working in Nicaragua because it's going to open that door for people to be like, see, I told you, I do want a job. I do want to spend outrageous amounts of effort pursuing this crazy thing that still makes absolutely no sense. This doesn't make it make more sense. This doesn't make it better. In fact, I feel like it makes it worse that now you have a way to become eligible for a job. So, Let's play through this scenario and imagine who this would be, right? So you want a job in Nicaragua. You want a job in an incredibly low-paying environment where there's a huge competition for the existing jobs. And the, the way to get it is to become an investor. Now, to become an investor, you have to go through a lot of hoops. And one of them is putting up a lot of money, a lot of money, right? So you put up a lot of money. It's a, it's a, it's a decent amount, right? It's not an, an incredible you know, impossible amount for most people, but it's a lot. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not 500 bucks or anything. So you put up this money and you generally have to put up years of being in the country, not just years of investing, but years of being in the country investing and potentially a bunch of other things. And you kind of have to commit to being here. And, uh, and I know people who are, who are investors and, and they don't live here full time. They live here part time. Um, I was on a round table with one the other day, but you know, millions of dollars of investment, been here for years. Yes, they're allowed to travel and invest other places as well, right? So that's kind of goes in hand in hand with being an investor. So, and I will explain one, a reason I think it could work and two, a reason why it might exist. Uh, because I have had about eight hours since I found this out to think about it and try to rationalize why would they allow this? But there are some things that you guys have pointed out that might lead us to this. Okay. So uh, under normal circumstances, the people who are asking, well, I want to work. I need a way to make money. This doesn't answer that, right? It doesn't make it make more sense. And it's a very difficult path. It takes years, lots of money. If you had years and lots of money, how would doing this to get a job makes sense. If you were putting in your investment here because you thought that was going to make your money as an investment, still hard, very hard, but it's quite different, right? That could make sense. It's a stretch, but it could make sense. So that, you know, I'm going to buy, you know, land. I'm going to open a factory. I'm going to do something, right? Okay. That could make you money. And so that as an investment for your livelihood, risky, but plausible. But coming here and opening a business without the purpose of that business making money and without the purpose of uh, getting residency, but the purpose being to do all those things to then have a normal job with someone else doesn't make a lot of sense. That would be – I challenge – as we go through this, I'm challenging anybody to come up with real use cases for this where you, you'd think you'd actually still want a working job here, right? And I don't care if you're like, I'm a plumber and I can't do anything else. I have to do stuff in person. I'm going to challenge you. I don't think you want a job here. Tell me what country you're from, what nationality passports you have, and where you're legally allowed to work to. Uh, and tell me what, what unbelievable lack of other skills you have that makes the whatever you think you can do in Nicaragua in person – valuable enough to offset all the things you should be able to do somewhere else, right? Do you, maybe you can't speak any language. Uh, maybe um, you're coming from a country where there's just no opportunities. Like, it's got to be something extreme, right? Because we've tried it with normal jobs. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so I'm challenging people that, you know, so many people come and ask me, well, how am I going to make money here? Well, turn it around. If you were allowed to work here, how would you make money here, right? Try it that way. Don't ask, well, what am I supposed to do? Nicaragua was not tasked with answering that, and nor am I, right? That's kind of, I mean, I want to help, but it's kind of like acting like I'm a high school guidance counselor. I don't know your background. 
I'm not a guidance counselor and figuring out how to be employed or how to be, uh, uh, you know, if you weren't coming to Nicaragua, I couldn't answer this for you. Coming to Nicaragua doesn't make it easier or give me some special skill to answer it for you. Does that make more sense? If, you, if, if this channel was just about, I don't know, vlogging, which is what it originally was before it was about Nicaragua. It's still not about Nicaragua. It's still my vlog. But before we had this kind of topic, if you came and said, hey, Scott, you've worked in a lot of fields. How do I work? That's not something I can answer for you. Nobody can, right? Someone who knows you really well can help guide you. But I, I you know, well, I, and if you phrased it another way, well, how am I supposed to make money? I don't know. You're supposed to figure that out, right? Like everybody has to figure out how to be employed, how to be, you know, gainfully employed and pay their bills. Of course, we all want to help. We all want you to be successful. No one wants anybody to be attempting to work and not be able to, right? That's not good for anybody. So we want you to be successful. Just us in this vlogging world, I have absolutely zero resources to help you make the life decision of what career to pursue, right? Does that make sense? That's really where that question goes, right? And, and how am I supposed to make, you're not, you know, no foreign government's job and no vlogger's job is to provide you with guaranteed income, right? That's, that's something we all have to solve. And I don't like that about the universe, right? Like, I don't think many of us do. We all wish, at least as far as I know, everyone wishes that the universe would provide so that we don't even have to work at all. And everything we do is just for our own entertainment or edification or personal growth or whatever. Fantastic, right? That's what we all want, I hope, as the end result, right? The Star Trek universe. But um, that isn't the one we have currently. And so that's not a question that should be asked, right? It, it implies a fundamental misunderstanding of adulthood, right? So yeah, it's, it's just a tough one. So, um, so I don't think this makes sense, but I definitely want people who think it might to let me know how that could be true. I, I really do want to dig into that. What is, what is making people think that? So let's move past that. So let's talk about how this might actually make sense and why. So let's talk about how you might use it. I think that's the most important piece to answer this for someone. And I know someone who almost could have done this. And I've worked in a lot of businesses and a lot of investments over the years. So I've seen some interesting things that, yeah, I can see how this might work. Hmm. I don't normally drink on the uh, non-live shows. I'm sitting at my desk, so I feel it's like like I feel like it's like like a live. And uh, so, if you have a group of investors, let's say you have a hotel, um, uh, let's just say it's a restaurant. You got ten of your buddies. You get together and you get them to to pitch in and buy a restaurant. But you didn't do it because you thought it was a good investment. You did. You put up your ten percent. You're not cheating anybody. You're just your goal is different. Everyone else wants to support you or they think it's a good investment. So they're willing to put in their 10%. Let's say it's $100,000, 10 guys, they all put up 10%, girls, whatever. So you and nine of your friends came up with $100,000 and you're starting a restaurant in Nicaragua. Good for you. Okay. Or anywhere. It doesn't have to be here. Now, nine of those people are going to have no involvement. They put up the money. They want to be helpful. They're glad that you know, you're able to have your dream, but you're going to go work at that restaurant. You're a chef. You're going to also greet people at the front door. You're going to, um, uh, you know, you're going to put in the effort to design the place. You're going to pour your heart and soul into it. You're going to be involved for months before it actually opens. You're going to design the menu. You're going to be there every night making sure it runs smoothly and all that. Well, why would you only get the same profits out of it as everyone else? They're only putting in 10%, but you're putting in 10% plus a full-time job or maybe two full-time jobs to make that dream a reality. Now, maybe you're not going to get paid amazingly well because it's your dream and not, you know, an actual job where people are, you know, <laughs> taking a risk on you. So you're, you're going to take some, some setbacks. But the normal mechanism, if you were doing this in the U.S. or Canada or something, the normal mechanism that you use to make this fair is that the group of investors would decide on what the salary should be for someone to be the executive chef, design the menus, be in charge of everything, take on that responsibility, and pay that salary. So let's say that that salary is $5,000 a month, right? And it could go up as, the, as success happens, as it becomes busier, but as a starting point, that's what they're willing to pay to have a full-time person overseeing this investment in the hopes that it becomes profitable so that they can make their money. Okay, so that one investor 
has their investment the same as everyone else. They put in 10,000, the same as everyone else. That 10,000 is treated the same as everyone else. That way the investment side is fair. And if you've never been an investor, if you've never been in private equity or you've never been in a traded public company and dealt with both sides of being an employee and an investor in the stocks, this probably has never occurred to you as an important mechanism. In big public companies, you'll see it all the time and not realize that this is what is happening. But let's look at a giant company. Let's say Microsoft. They're quite large. So at Microsoft, there's a decent chance that a whole bunch of my viewers are actually investors in Microsoft. You may not know it because it's something you get through a hedge fund or whatever. And probably not too many of my viewers have hedge funds, but mutual funds and index funds and all those kinds of things. You probably own some amount of Microsoft. You are one of the owners. Unlike my example where there's 10 owners, you've got like 10 million owners, but it's probably way more. But you're one of 10 million owners. You get one ten millionth or whatever of Microsoft's profits for the year. They made $100 million. You get $10. Wow. Awesome. You get that by the nature of having purchased a tiny slice of the company. You're taking profits at the end of the year. Now, an employee of Microsoft needs to get paid. One, they have to be paid minimum wage or higher. That's just the law. Two, they need benefits and that costs money and that kind of stuff. And three, they're expected to do work. As an investor, you're not expected to do diddly. Nothing. They're not even expected to know who you are in most cases, and sometimes you don't know that you hold some of Microsoft. It goes both ways. There's zero involvement. That's standard. So that employee may make, we'll just throw out numbers, $50,000 a year, and uh, you know they work at Microsoft. They need to get paid. They need to be treated normally. They need to answer to their boss. They need to you know manage their subordinates. They need to be paid a normal salary, and they need to be rewarded for doing whatever the same way everyone else is rewarded. If that employee goes out and buys Microsoft stock, it in no way affects their job. It doesn't make their job pay more, pay less, more risky, less risky, nothing. It doesn't affect them. If they bought the majority of the stocks, you know, put in like half a trillion dollars of investment, yes, at that point, if you own most of the stocks, weird things start happening. But until then, your ownership and your employment ship are two different things. And the reason you do this is so you can fairly compensate someone who's working in a business for their work and also maintain a fair investment mechanism for the money that they put in. And this is a very standard mechanism by which companies of all sizes, private, giant, public, tiny, doesn't matter, all used to ensure that investors are treated fairly and employees are treated fairly and a person who may be want, you know be on both sides of the fence isn't getting an unfair advantage or isn't um, you know feeling like they're cheating people or other people feel like they're getting cheated by that person it's how you maintain a good healthy environment so you can imagine this happening and i know of a place that did this here in nicaragua now the business was not actually in Nicaragua, so none of this applied, and there was no reason to have to do these extra things. But that is a mechanism. If you had a bunch of investors in Nicaragua, and the person that was one of the people that was going to be working there, who is one of the owners, and probably this is how they got their right to work, right, is they invested so much in this business that it qualified them as an investor. Now they have investor residency. Now they're allowed to also be an employee of their own business. And so... Does that make sense? Under normal circumstances, no. If you were the only owner, it would not make sense because if you went and opened a restaurant, you would want to take your profits generally through capital gains, through investments, right? Your investment, which would be 100% in the business, could pay you as profits. And under normal circumstances, that is equal to or better than being paid a salary. In almost all cases, almost anywhere in the world, it is better, right? So this is something that uh, one of those, you know, rich dad, poor dad things. When you are thinking like rich people, you want to be paid from profits. When you're thinking like poor people, you want to be paid from salary under normal circumstances, always an exception. So normal investors, this doesn't apply to. Normal workers, this doesn't apply to. But in that really rare situation where you have multiple investors and it gets you to the point where you're allowed to work, and you want to work in the business that you're investing in, and you want to be paid differently than the investment dispersion, then this mechanism does exist for you if that is a Nicaraguan business rather than a foreign business that just does some stuff in Nicaragua. So that has some value. So you could see why maybe 
they allow this for investors and why you might want to do it. I've never heard of anyone in Nicaragua actually falling into this scenario, even hypothetically, but hypothetically we can imagine that it could. So, okay, so now you know that that is actually a path you could end up at, theoretically. The other thing, and people have mentioned this a bit, and I was a little bit stumped as to, yeah, this is a little bit problematic and it isn't super clear. What happens when you own your own business and you are not taking a salary, so you're not getting in trouble that way, but you are working at it rather a bit, and you're acting as a manager, you're acting as an employee, and it's something that theoretically a Nicaraguan could be doing, but you're doing it, and while you're not taking a salary, you're still kind of behaving like an employee, and duck law, right? If you act like an employee, you kind of are an employee. So that becomes a little bit problematic for owners. So the reason this law might exist is to allow for owners to bypass any questions around that because it does introduce one of the rare gray areas in this type of employment. At what point does someone managing their investment turn into someone working at their investment? And it's, it really is hard to define when you would call one thing one and one thing the other, because under some, some circumstances, all work is management, right? Well, you're you know, stacking boxes in the warehouse, but while doing so, I'm thinking about better ways to stack boxes, or while doing so, I'm monitoring the other employees or whatever, so you can see how that could be construed one way. Or you could say, well, no amount of management is also not working. If you hired someone, there's nothing you couldn't hire someone else to do. Maybe things that aren't practical, but you could. You could hire someone to do anything, include completely run the business and make all your thinking for you. So any amount of thinking about the business would technically run afoul the other way. Well, this fixes that, that there isn't any gray area, and you can. the only thing you have to worry about is if you pay yourself through a salary mechanism, you have to pay uh, income-based taxes, and if you pay yourself through profits dispersion, you have to pay yourself through a capital gains style tax. It's not what it's called here, but it's the same thing. Uh, and of course, you could pay yourself a blend uh, and take a blend of taxes, which would then be a little bit more complicated, but that's common if you're paying yourself a salary. Generally, you pay yourself a predictable flat salary and the rest, you essentially pay yourself as a bonus via capital gains at the end of the year, more or less. Not exactly what's happening, but you can think of it that way. So those are the scenarios why I think this might exist, to allow for a complicated scenario that's super unlikely, but plausible, and they wouldn't want to rule it out because that could cause problems. And to eliminate the need for explaining or defending your, your behavior in overseeing a business uh, as, as not being an employee. Because if you can defend it as, well, I'm allowed to be an employee, but I'm choosing to be paid through a, a capital gains mechanism, then they know they're getting their tax revenue. It's just through a different office or a different paperwork. They're still getting their taxes. It's not a tax dodge. It is a different mechanism, a simpler mechanism um, of dealing with, uh, uh, in, instead of salary taking, just profits. Those are the only scenarios that I can think of that make this make any sense. Uh, and, and in both of those cases, those are things where the one, yeah, we didn't account for that, but I know of no one for whom it would matter. It's a really, really fringe case, but it's good to know that that option's out there. The other, though, does help us with the somewhat, and I'll admit it, like our answers were pretty bad around that, and this would be why. How do you handle the scenario where you're working somewhere and... Uh, you're not being paid a salary, but you are behaving like an employee and, you know, you're at the job and maybe you're, you know, we know a restaurant, right, where, yeah, the owners sometimes directly make the pizza. Sometimes they run the cash register. And like we said, it's not a problem for the owner to have their hands in the till. It's their till. And that's a little bit different than a normal employee work. So that's a pretty much a solid look the other way thing. But it would be good if there was a concrete, you're allowed to do this and not a problem whatsoever. Well, it turns out there is in the rare case where you're an investment you have residency by investment, you get the right to be employed in the country or to act as an employee without there being any problems. Big surprise to me. Hopefully you guys find this useful. I apologize for being so adamant about something I was so wrong about. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully we grow with this together and uh, let me know where you guys think there might be a spot where this actually makes sense beyond my examples, um, or you know someone for whom this actually matters. Like I know the, the last case, like it just answers things we know, uh, but the, but the uh, might want to um, work 
in reality, in a real world business, as a Nicaraguan employee, right? You could always do it as a foreign employee. That's where it gets, right? And, and so the thing that I want to make sure we point out is this, the, one of the biggest reasons that we say you don't want to be an employee here in Nicaragua, under a scenario where you would generally be able to be an employee here in Nicaragua, you would also generally be in a situation where you do not have to pay taxes or very many taxes in another jurisdiction. And in basically all those cases, the money is coming from somewhere else. Not always, but you put these things together and in almost all cases, your ability to be paid from money being generated somewhere else is so high that you can make more in raw terms, that's the first piece, and not pay taxes or not pay nearly as much taxes for that money coming from somewhere else. When we say that you are absolutely tax-free in Nicaragua, that is implying that you don't work here. If you are able to work here, if you actually become salaried and do work here, you will have to pay taxes. Now, you always have to pay capital gains, but capital gains aren't you paying taxes. They're your business paying taxes. It's a little bit different. And it's not really capital gains. It's profits. So it's profit tax. It's a, it's a corporate tax. It's the same thing as, as income tax, just through a different channel. Right. Um, but it's for the same reason we explained earlier. Sometimes you get paid as an investor. Sometimes you get paid as, a, as an employee. That's basically what's going on. In one case, you, the taxes are coming out as salary is being paid and the other taxes are coming out as the profits are being paid. That's all. We refer to them in those different ways. Uh, so, again, everyone's paying their taxes. Everyone's getting taxed. Every, everything works in a logical way. When you run a business, sometimes these are little nuances that sometimes you want to, you know, you can play around with, but everyone can play around with them. And, and you know, they, they make very small differences. Mostly it comes down to what's easier for you or makes sense with your pay schedules or whatever. Uh, but if you're an American, for example, you get massive tax benefits by being paid from the U.S. If you're a Canadian, it's a little bit more complicated, but the total size of the benefits can be larger. Uh, most countries have some amount of benefit for working abroad and stuff. So it's very, very, very rare to have a scenario where you would have the ability to work in Nicaragua that it could pay anywhere close to as much. And even if it did, that it would not have a huge tax penalty that makes it not make sense. <sighs> yeah, so I was wrong. Mia culpa. Um, you can't say that I didn't come on and say that I was sorry and that I was wrong. Here I am uh, apologizing quite publicly. And uh, let's hope this is the last time. It's probably not going to be. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel and uh, pay for me to correct my mistakes. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, like and subscribe. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And we're going to pop up some videos right here on the last page. Hopefully I don't forget, but apparently I'm making mistakes left and right, so I probably will. Uh, but there are these videos up. Just click on one of those, and it will take you to another video and tell the algorithm that you uh, appreciate the show.